Dr. Cook here. Um, this is going to be an overview of the controls and an introduction to Combat Mission Professional. Uh, when the simulation starts, uh, it is paused, so we can do our uh, setup from there. Is a uh, blue box here uh, that outlines a setup zone for our forces. This is where we can put them when we initially uh, start the simulation, uh, to orient you um, to how the units uh, function. If I were to uh, click on uh, either uh, the soldiers themselves or on the unit icon that's floating over their head, that will uh, select that unit. And I can see that they're selected because the icon is flashing and all of the soldiers in that uh, small unit are circled in green here. Um, now once I select a unit, I will get uh, some information in this lower left hand panel. Uh, so I've selected a rifle squad. I can see here that this is second squad from 1st Platoon Charlie Company and Staff Sergeant Deal uh, is the squad leader. There is information here in the center that's uh, important to recognize. Right now they're all rested because we haven't started anything yet. Um, but that will change to uh, telling us if they are tired or fatigued or exhausted uh, as the simulation goes on. There's also this triangle underneath here that will change color um, as things start to happen. That's a suppression level. Uh, as they come under any fire and eventually they could get pinned um, and unable to move. In the center screen here we have some information about each of the members of our rifle squad with um, a weapons icon a graphic to show us what weapons each one has so we can see that we've got our two M249s, we've got um, our two Grenadiers with uh, M4, M320 combos and I have uh, M4s with ACOGs on them uh, across rest of the squad members here. Just to the left of that is some information about things that are in the squad. So this squad is carrying a breach kit. Someone's got binoculars. There are nine sets of night vision goggles, so one for each member of the squad. And they have two AT4s between them uh, in this scenario. If I were to go ahead and uh, select one of the um, crew served weapon systems or a vehicle, uh, something that has more than one soldier to operate it, I get a slightly different view here in the center panel. Uh, you can see here is my crew served weapon, in this case the M240 medium machine gun. Um, so that shows that there's these little pips here, that sh uh, three dots that show that all three crew members are present. Uh, some information, so in this case it takes 8 seconds to deploy, 11 seconds to pack up if I start to move them. And some ammunition information, uh, they have over a thousand rounds of 762 with them. Uh, with some of the vehicles there might be other icons here for maintenance or other status information related to the piece of equipment. To orient you to some of the camera controls, there are multiple ways uh, to control our viewpoint. The first one is to use the keyboard. So I can use the W, A, S, and D keys uh, to move my camera uh, forward, left, back, and right. Uh, I can use the Q and E keys uh, to slew myself left and right. I can also use the arrow keys to go ahead and control uh, my pan and tilt in a little bit of a slower, finer manner. I can use the uh, X key to zoom in my view and the Z key to zoom out. I can also use uh, R and F uh, to tilt my view, keeping kind of focused on the same spot uh, up and down. Uh, so those are the keyboard controls. I can also use the mouse control things. So uh, I can move the clicker, the pointer around with the mouse, but if I hold the left mouse button, uh, and move the mouse, and I will translate myself around the screen. Uh, however, I move the mouse left, right, forward, and back. If I were to click the right mouse button, I can control my pan and tilt uh, of where my view is looking, and the uh, scroll wheel will raise and lower myself from ground level and up to the uh, sky here. There are also number keys that are uh, pre-assigned. I can always, if I get myself completely lost, I can use those to come back. Uh, the number one key um, will give me a grounds eye view. Number two will be just slightly higher. Uh, three and four start to get into these uh, third person views. And uh, as I go up five, six, seven, eight, and nine, will give me these map views uh, from the sky looking down onto the terrain. The right-hand panel is uh, the command panel. Uh, there's a couple tabs along the top, M for movement, C is all combat commands, S for special, and A for admin things. 
when I have a unit selected, I can select one of uh, these commands so I can tell them to move. Now, we are in setup mode with the blue box present. If I move my unit uh, anywhere inside uh, the blue box, uh, they will magically jump there. From there, if I were to try and move them somewhere outside of the box, you see I get this line and a waypoint is set. Uh, that is giving them a command to move there. They won't execute that until the simulation starts. And I can go ahead and give all of my units uh, some commands um, to move forward onto the firing line. If I want to get rid of a command, I can hit the backspace key and it will delete the last waypoint. And then I can change uh, the command that they have been given. So I'm going to tell them to move quickly up to that firing line. If I hit this flashing red button, uh, I will unpause uh, and start the simulation. So you can see the blue box goes away. I'm no longer in setup mode. And uh, my rifle squads have <laughs> begun executing their orders to move themselves forward to the firing line. If I want to select more than one unit, I can hold down the shift key and then click and drag the mouse to create a box around them when I release the shift key and the mouse button. I now have multiple units selected. I can go ahead and give them a command um, and they will all receive that order and begin executing. Now you notice that they have different end waypoints. They will keep their uh, formation that they were in when I selected them. If I have a unit selected and I press the tab key, I'll go into view lock mode, which will follow them as they walk. And then I can use my number keys um, to get uh, right up behind them and follow along with what they are seeing, where they are going. Move it, soldier. So far, we just dealt with uh, telling our squads move where on. to move towards. Um, they do have uh, intelligence. We can rely on our squad leaders to do basic squad leader things. Uh, if they were ambushed, they would react to contact and uh, get themselves out of there, perhaps deviating into a different uh, direction. So when we have some enemy now appear, uh, over this berm, our soldiers will uh, engage them and open fire without us having to give any commands to make them do that. The AI soldiers uh, within combat mission do have some sense of self-preservation and they can have different levels of how dedicated they are to their mission. Uh, here we see uh, the last uh, survivor of this squad that has been attacked and uh, he is uh, attempting to surrender uh, to the enemy. 